As you all know, we plan the biggest celebration imaginable. My wife worked for over a year planning a gigantic party with all of our family and friends, which makes all of you being here today that much more special to us. Your mother and I could never have imagined you acquiring the success that you have. And as proud as we are, that means nothing to us compared to the woman that you've become. I know this isn't how we all pictured today to happen, but I can't picture a more perfect occasion, surrounded by family, lifelong friends, and loved ones. Your dreams as a kid have finally been realized in Nathan. Die just as much as Nathan deserves you, you deserve him. Do thou now also, O Master, our Lord and God, send down thy heavenly grace upon these thy servants, Nathan and Diana, and grant that this thy handmaid may in all things be pleasing unto her husband, and that this thy servant may love and cherish his wife, that they may live according to thy will. the resurrection of your son. Have you, Nathan, a good, free, and unconstrained will and a firm intention to take unto yourself to wife this woman, Diana, whom you see here before you? I have. Have you, Diana, a good, free, and unconstrained will and a firm intention to take unto yourself to husband this man, Nathan, whom you see here before you. I have. For the servant of God, Nathan, and for the handmaid of God, Diana, who now plight each other their troth, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord that he will send down upon them perfect and peaceful love and his help. Let us pray to the Lord that he will preserve them in oneness of mind and in steadfastness of faith. Let us pray to the Lord that he will bless them with a blameless life. Let us pray to the Lord that the Lord our God will grant unto them an honorable marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord our God, who hast espoused the church as a pure virgin from among the Gentiles, bless this betrothal and unite and preserve these thy servants in peace and oneness of mind. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The servant of God, Nathan, is betrothed unto the handmaiden of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Nathan, is betrothed unto the handmaid of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Nathan, is betrothed unto the handmaid of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The hand
handmaid of God, Diana, is betrothed unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The handmaid of God, Diana, is betrothed unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The handmaid of God, Diana, is betrothed unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may exchange the rings. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord our God, bless the betrothal of these thy servants, Nathan and Diana, and confirm the word which they have spoken. Establish them in the holy union which is from thee, for thou in the beginning didst make them male and female, and by thee is the woman joined unto the man as a helpmeet. Look thou upon thy servant, Nathan, and upon thy handmaid, Diana, and establish their betrothal in faith and in oneness of mind, in truth and in love. And, O Lord our God, do thou now bless this putting on of rings with thy heavenly benediction, and let thine angel go before them all the days of their life. For thou art he who blesseth and sanctifieth all things, and unto thee do we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Bless them, O Lord our God, as thou displayest. Bless Abraham and Sarah. Bless them, O Lord our God, as thou displayest Isaac and Rebekah. Bless them, O Lord our God, as thou didst bless Joachim and Anna. Bless them, O Lord our God, as thou didst bless Zacharias and Elizabeth. Preserve them, O Lord our God, as thou didst preserve Noah in the ark. Preserve them, O Lord our God as thou didst preserve the three holy children from the fire, and let that gladness come upon them which the blessed Helena had when she found the precious cross. Remember them, O Lord our God, as thou didst remember thy forty holy martyrs, sending down upon them crowns from heaven. Remember them, O Lord our God, and the parents who have nurtured them, for the prayers of parents make firm the foundations of houses. Remember, O Lord our God, thy servants, the attendants of the bridal pair who share in this joy. Remember, O Lord our God, thy servant Nathan and thy handmaid Diana, and bless them. Grant them fair children and concord of soul and body. Exalt them like the cedars of Lebanon, like a luxuriant vine, that having sufficiency in all things, they may abound in every work that is good and acceptable unto thee. And let them behold their children's children round about their table like a newly planted olive orchard, that, obtaining favor in thy sight, they may shine like the stars of heaven in thee, our Lord and God. And unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father who is from everlasting and to the Son and to the life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The servant of God, Nathan, is crowned unto the handmaid of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Nathan, is crowned unto the handmaid of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Nathan, is crowned unto the handmaid of God, Diana, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The handmaid of God, Diana is crowned unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the handmaid of God, Diana, is crowned unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The handmaid of God, Diana, is crowned unto the servant of God, Nathan, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord our God, crown them with glory and with honor. Let us attend. Thou hast set upon their heads crowns of precious stones. They asked life of thee, and thou gavest it to them. For thou wilt give them thy blessing forever and ever. Thou wilt make them to rejoice in gladness through thy presence. Wisdom. A lesson from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul of the Ephesians. Let us attend. Give thanks always for all things unto God and Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto you and your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having squat or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So let men love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth or cherisheth it even as the Lord of the church. For we as members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall men leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. O God, who hast created all things by thy might, and hast made fast the round world, and adornest the crown of all things which thou hast made, bless now with thy spiritual blessing this common cup, which thou dost give to those who are now united in the community of marriage. For blessed is thy name, and glorified is thy kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Say a dance thy joy for a virgin is with child and shall bear a son Emmanuel who is both God and man and glory and this is his name then we call the, vir the virgin blessed And have received your crowns 
Entreat ye the Lord that he will have mercy on our souls. Glory to thee, O Christ our God. The apostles boast the martyr's joy, whose preaching was the consubstantial trinity. Be thou exalted, O bridegroom, like unto Abraham, and be thou blessed as unto Isaac, and do thou multiply as unto Jacob, walking in peace and keeping the commandments of God in righteousness. And thou, O bride, be thou exalted like unto Sarah, and exalt thou like unto Rebekah, and do thou multiply as unto Rachel, and rejoice thou in thy husband, fulfilling the conditions of the law, for so it is well-pleasing to God. Christ is risen. So, thank God we have uh, made it to the end relatively in one piece. I know that one of my distractions was that I'm wired, I'm mic'd. The times of these live streaming days, you know, people have commented how they never really pay attention that much to the words when they're in church. Because when we're in church, we, we get to watch all kinds of things. We get to watch the movement of people. Um, we get to, 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 to hear certain kinds of things. We get babies crying and we get people walking in and out of the church. So there's many things that, that distract us from the central um, part of what we're doing here, which is to come and pay attention and listen to the word of God. Um, and so I know that for myself, you know, just today, as I'm praying these prayers, yeah, and, and weddings are always wonderful in this kind of a way, but today I was a little bit more able to just be kind of calm and slow and relaxed because it didn't feel quite as, as though um, we were putting on a show, you know? And it's always the case almost that, man, when I hit that, that prayer that says, that they may shine like the stars of heaven. What a beautiful and glorious and miraculous and large kind of image that is. Because, you know, it's not only um, in some kind of poetic way that that is, is used, you know, that we are that kind of big. You know, that we, uh, when we talk about what a human being is in God's image and likeness, we're made to share in all that is God's by his nature, we get to share in by his grace. And so we get big, like the stars of heaven. And when we talk about you know, the, the saints who we see on our iconostas and all around the church today, when we look at them, we know them to be examples of beings that are way beyond human, that they're divine human. I mean, that's what we're called to be. And, and marriage is one of the paths we walk to get there. And our spouses are the main person in, in our getting there. Sometimes for better, we're happy about it. And sometimes for worse, it causes us great distress, you know? And um, in addition, you know, on, in, in historic times like these, we get a special connection too when we hear the marriage at the Cana in Galilee reference. Because we know that if we were to go back a couple thousand years, to, to imagine that people have been marrying in this fashion in the Christian church for a couple thousand years. You know, some variety of it. I mean, even as we talked about yesterday, um, Brendan, with the, uh, the, the dance, the liturgical dance, you know? Um, things have changed certainly in how we express it, but our circling the table was a liturgical dance, um, most likely done as a dance back in ancient days. But when we go back a couple thousand years and try and imagine what it would have been like for people like Nathan and Diana um, to be brought together in marriage and what that would mean. Because, you know, nowadays we're pretty much able to make it on our own. You know, if something doesn't work, well then the heck with you. You know, I can, I can do better or I can, I can do it without you. But if we look back to marriage as what would have been um, a, a basic and fundamental uh, uh, unity 
of survival to a large degree. And certainly, you know, when we talk about now, you know, uh, if the schools don't open, how children, you know, are going to have to have a parent at home. You know, well, that would have been certainly true if we go back um, to ancient times that, you know, if, you were, if, if the human race were going to continue, mothers had to stay home with the children while dad went out to get food, you know, and, and, and sustenance. So this brings us a little bit closer to the reality that modern times and modern civilization hide from us. You know, it's a, it's a uh, very thin veneer when we come right down to it of, of certainty and security and safety that we have in civilized times. Because all it takes is a good pandemic, a good, a good you know, worldwide um, disease to start to, you know, to, to cut us down to size. And that's always a good thing. Because as we gather today, we're not just gathering to celebrate a marriage between two people that we love but we're also entering into the mystery of, of human life at all, you know? And we're seeing it in our day and age um, in a, a, a much more, I guess, in our face sort of way, you know, um, which is exactly why we're wearing masks today, um, because it is in our face and because we do know that, no, you know, we want to really, really, really value each other because we don't know, you know, how much time we will have with each other what the future holds for us, you know, and while not being fearful and panicky, we want to be honest and straightforward about the absolute reality about our existence, which is that we're here for a short time. And what we want to do with that time is let it be as eye-opening for us as we can. Let it be as used as much for our, our growth and our enlightenment and our illumination and our discovery, you know, of where we are headed with all this, to be shining like the stars in heaven. So, um, Nathan and Diana, God bless you as you begin um, your, your journey into the stratosphere to shine like stars in heaven. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm very happy, happy, happy to be here, um, able to, to play this role um, in your marriage. You know, our time together, we spent lots of time together, you know, talking and, and, and reading and studying and, and discussing kinds of things. And it was a sheer, you know, an extreme pleasure for me all the way. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, now, then, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce, uh, for the first time, as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Nathan and Diana Sherman. You may kiss the bride. blessed with such wonderful children and we couldn't possibly be prouder of all of your academic and professional accomplishments. I know we've always told you that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> but in that regard, your mother and I couldn't, could never have imagined you acquiring the success that you have. And as proud as we are, that means nothing to us compared to the woman that you've become. The morals that you have, the love for other people, the understanding, the person that you've become makes us prouder than anything in the world. And we don't think you could have possibly picked a better match than Nathan. Nathan, we couldn't be happier that Diana's a part of your family and you're a part of our family. Thank you. I can remember nights that we would talk on the phone, even though we lived 20 yards apart, about what we thought our husbands would be like. We were so young, but thanks to the love from our own dads, we still knew even then what we deserved. Your dreams as a kid have finally been realized in Nathan. If I could hand select the most ideal candidate as your husband, it would be somebody kind, hardworking, patient, gentle, funny, reliable, loyal, and encouraging. I would search the whole world to find you that man, but luckily I didn't have to <laughs> because you found him in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. I could not dream of a better husband for Di. 
die, you deserve every single good thing in this world. You're truly a remarkable human being, and every single person here is lucky to exist in the same time in history as you. But I have to say, I feel exceptionally lucky. No matter where I go or what I do, I will never ever be alone. I have never known a day without love because you've always literally been my best friend. You are a calm and kindness in a world that can be chaotic and mean. I have never gone a day without your support and encouragement, and I am who I am today because of you. Die just as much as Nathan deserves you, you deserve him. I am so lucky to be gaining a new best friend. <laughs> and this one I put in asterisk. This one's for Nathan only. You do, you do not have to jump off the top of the swing set or rollerblade down the big hill to prove that you're part of the gang gang. <laughs> we'll just let you be a member by marriage. <laughs> I love you guys. The two most important people in the world are sitting right here next to me, and I couldn't be more happier. I have a message to the newlyweds from all the married couples in the audience, to Nathan and Diana. Some advice for the both of you. Run away, run away, run away. <laughs> anyway, my brother has always been the brother for firsts. He was the first one out of the womb. He was the first one not to throw up on her mother when we were fed. And now, he's the first one to be married. I remember when Nathan and I first started working at the Boy Scout camp together and how well he did with the younger campers. He's always been a caring, loving individual, and it's no wonder Diana sees that in him too. On hikes, he would always tell the campers, we're halfway there, no point in turning around. They'd been five minutes outside of camp. <laughs> but he would encourage them to try their best, even when they were having a bad day or trying to learn a new skill with difficulty. He was always patient, kind, and caring, and I've seen that same person love and cherish Diana through pharmacy school and through these last eight and a half years. Diana, that same loving person has also broken my foot twice, so be careful. <laughs> my brother's taken me around Pittsburgh, he's taken me to pit football games and tailgates, and he's gotten me out of my comfort zone, and I can't thank him enough for that. He's truly the brother I'd never asked for and the friend I always needed. Whether it's grilling dogs at the tailgate or coming up with answers for your buddies at Jeans on Trivia Night, he's always been a team player, and we're all very happy to see you now on Team Diana. Diana, please put your left hand on the table. Nathan, please put your right hand on top of your new brides. Nathan and Diana, you've known each other since middle school, if not elementary school and you've been together since junior year of high school? I remember when Nathan and Diana first dating, started dating, when you asked her to be your girlfriend and you said yes. I want you to sit here now and cherish that moment. I also want you to cherish this moment and realize with your hand on top of your new wife's that this is the last time you will have the upper hand for more than 30 seconds in your relationship. <laughs> you can let go now. <laughs> Diana, you look absolutely stunning this afternoon, and I'm so happy my brother is getting the privilege to marry you. He's truly found a wonderful person, partner, and soulmate. You are one of the smartest people I know, and the only advice I can give you is this. It's a long night of dancing, and Nathan has broken my foot twice. Be careful. <laughs> Emily, you've done a fantastic job helping Diana throughout her life, and especially with today. From elementary school to adulthood, what you've done for Diana can't be measured or understated. Dan, you're a very lucky man to have her in your life. Nathan and Diana, I wish you the happiest marriage a couple could have. And to them, I propose a toast. To Nathan and Diana, here's to love, laughter, and your happily ever after. To the newest husband and wife, may you have the best of life. Cheers. Thank you.